Okay, my name is Goro Fujita. Um, I'm an art director, illustrator, and animator. And um, I started my career, just to give you a little bit of uh, context of who I am, I started my career as a character animator uh, for TV advertisement and feature films in Germany. And in 2015, 2008, I was uh, hired by DreamWorks Animation as a visual development artist. Worked there for seven years, working on movies such as uh, Megamind, Mary Madagascar, uh, Madagascar 3, Penguins of Madagascar, a lot of Madagascars, and um, lastly, Boss Baby. In 2015, I left DreamWorks Animation and uh, became an art director for VR experiences at Oculus Story Studio. So I worked on the tail end of Lost and art directed Henry, and this was actually the first time I came in touch with VR and learned about this magical new world. So today in this talk, I want to focus on the VR part of my story. So first I wanna borrow a sentence from Steve Jobs. He says, every once in a while there's a revolutionary product that changes everything. And for me, it was the Amiga 1000. So I'm from that generation, yes. I might look young, but I'm old. Um, and basically, uh, I remember m my parents didn't like technology, so I didn't have one, but my friends had one. So I would always go to sleepovers and stuff, and we'd play for hours, you know, and changing the disc was actually exciting, you know, where, where you'd play a role-playing game, and it's like, a disc change, you know, and I'm like, oh, crap. <laughs> and then in um, 19, it was 89, yeah, the Game Boy came out. Again, my parents are not into technology, and they're like, you're not gonna get this. But our uncle was like, hey, look what I got for you. you know? And he got us the Game Boy, and my brother and I were like, oh my god, what is this? Right? So that was like this mind-blowing thing that was like first time smooth animation, photoreal graphics. You know? I really <laughs> thought, thought so. You know? I'm like, oh my god, <laughs> I'm never going to let this go. You know? And it was just so memorable that I still remember the first time I played Motocross Maniacs and uh, Mario, Mario Land, right? Super Mario Land. And of course, lastly, um, the iPhone, which fundamentally changed the way we communicate. So what all those devices have in common is they created a very memorable impact in my life. And in 2015, I was introduced to the Oculus Rift. And little did I know that, oh, no, 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 why is it jumping forward? No, 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 go back, go back. <laughs> Sorry about that. Close yeah, close your eyes, okay. Stay. <laughs> All right, so little did I know that uh, the Rift together with Quill would create numerous, countless of those memorable moments. So what is Quill? So at Oculus Story Studio, we created this VR experience called the Angelica. Some of you guys might be familiar with it. And um, the idea was to create a full-on narrative entirely through illustrations. VR illustrations. This is the director, Sashka Unzels. And, um, but we had no idea how to do it. I don't like this clicker, sorry. It's running out of battery. So, I'll bear with me. Okay, so, but we had no idea how to do it, right? So we tried different approaches. We tried like textured um, planes uh, textures mapped on 3D geometry, textures with alpha, alpha channels and stuff like that, or even particles that would create the line art. But every time we looked at it in VR, you could kind of tell how we did it, so it distracted from the actual subject. So the art needed to look like it came directly from the artist. But how would we do this, right? That's when Inigo happened. Inigo is the creator, the mastermind behind Quill. This is actually what he said, give me 48 hours. So in a two days hackathon, he created a VR painting um, tool prototype that later on became Quill. And then we tried it and everybody was like mind blown and we knew this is going to be, this is going to work because you could paint directly in space. This is also what he says, it just meant. And then Sashka hired talented artist Wesley Alsbrook, editorial artist Wesley Alsbrook, um, as the illustrator and art director for D'Angelica. She was able to pick it up in no time, 
and um, she was building 3D worlds. And then everybody was happy and we were blasting through production, you know, and everything was like so perfect. Of course, the reality was more like this. <laughs> but it all worked out, right? So here's a little piece of the Angelica so you get an idea of uh, how Quill contributed to this project. So I didn't work on D'Angelica, but Quill had a very personal impact on me as an artist. So here's my Quill story. This is a CU02, CU stands for cooking unit. So um, this is a story that I wrote in, back in 2004, and it says a cooking unit that is one of the first prototypes and he has a malfunction and falls in love with a street cat and leaves the kitchen. And since then, I've been sending him all around the world in my imagination, in my illustrations. I let him travel with his guitar. He does love play playing guitar. And here he's, ah, oh, come on, guys. <laughs> Sorry. So here he's taking a walk in Italy. So I have to stay close, I think. Um, and here's, he's visiting New York for the first time, actually before me. So in all those years, I never even considered that I could ever meet my own creation until Inigo wrote Quill and our worlds meet. So when he first created the prototype, the first thing I did was like, I have to create CU02. So I painted him in front of me, just at the scale like I imagined him to be. And all of a sudden, I put rain in there, I put sound of rain in there, and all of a sudden, I would share the world with my imagination. And that was a magical, unforgettable moment for me because I was able to be inside my own mind meeting a character that I made up. So at this point, I was like, this is going to change everything. And then during this prototype phase, Inigo claimed like, oh, and by the way, Quill has an infinite canvas. And I'm like, come on, infinite canvas? You know, let, 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 me, let me see what you got, right? So this is, might look familiar to some of you guys, is when I came up with Worlds and Worlds. So the idea was to create a world nested within another world, nested in, within another world, to really put it to the test if it's actually infinite, and I could not break it, <laughs> right? And this was like, you know, when I was in the office, I zoomed out just like that, and I was like, holy beep, you know? So this was like another moment where I'm like saying, this is gonna change everything. And then in early 2016, we actually came up with an early prototype of animation in Quill which is when I created a moment in time. I probably have to press from now on, sorry about that, when I squat, you know, it's good exercise for me. So, so um, this is um, a moment in time, the idea was to create, to capture a moment that you can re-experience from multiple angles. So this is like an endless loop, but it is a full on city corner. This is me and my house. And there's actually like a really cool anecdote that I like to tell is, um, I was painting my room in VR, in that room, and I would look at the reference, like at the real room through that little gap. I don't have a large nose bridge, so I have a pretty large gap there, so I can always look up and see everything. So I would just paint, 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 look up, paint, paint, paint. <laughs> and then I wanted to paint the side walls, right? And then I'm painting, and I'm like, okay, let's paint the side wall, and I'm like, I see black limbo, and I'm like, what? What did I want to do? And I'm like, okay, I paint, paint. Oh, I wanted to paint the sidewall, and I look. And the thing was that I, at that moment, thought already that I'm in my room because I had part of it painted. 
So I didn't even think of looking up to look at the reference. I thought I would see the wall when I look over. So that was like a crazy matter moment for me. You know? and, and it kept happening. The more detail I had, I was like, okay, what does it look like? And then you get into this weird loop where you forget what you were doing because you don't see what you expect. You know? So that was like crazy. So just to show you how crazy it was, this is side by side. Left is the quill painting, right is the real footage. How did I do this? I strapped the GoPro on my Oculus Rift and then I ma matched it to an After Effects, you know, make it work. But you see that it's pretty uncanny. If you have the right lighting, even with like rough painting, it actually looks pretty photoreal. And then in 2017, I had the uh, like happy pleasure to basically to be able to show my 99-year-old grandma, she turns 100 in two months, um, to show her a moment in time. And she was like super nonchalant about it. And she said, oh, okay, this is awesome. Oh, I don't see my hands. No feet, okay, okay, I get it, you know. She said, so, hold on a second. So you painted this? And I'm like, yeah, I painted this in VR. And he said, I don't know what you're talking about. This, this is amazing. I wish, I wish I could show grandpa, right? So it was like really, really sweet. So another very like magical moment for me. And then um, the animation feature advanced forward. And um, this is another, which leads me to another memorable mo moment where I created weather for the first time. You know, I really felt like cast away Tom Hanks on the island. Oh, I created weather, you know, <laughs> instead of fire. Um, <laughs> and this was revolutionary to me, that moment, because I was in the office painting in the morning. I put the sound in first because I wanted to feel the sound. And I, I was like immersed in that sound. It's like white space, right? And then I start painting and painting and I start animating to the sound. And I'm like, whoa, this is coming alive, right? And then uh, the more I had, the more I forgot that I'm actually in the office. And I felt like I'm just creating weather. And then I saw that patch of grass animating already. And back then, the selection tool was very new. I'm going to show it to you in a live demo after this. But it was very new, so you could select strokes and duplicate strokes. So I'm like, what if I select those blowing grass bits like over time? So I would hold the selection tool in, select, select, select. And I duplicate, and I have like this moving grass in my hand. And I'm like, Oh my gosh, you know, I took my headset off and wrote my engineer like, hey, Sebastian, Sebastian, like, I just duplicated animated grass. And he said, like, yeah, I made it this way. And I'm like, oh, you're a genius. <laughs> so that was like a moment that I also treasure forever. It was like insane, unbelievable. And then the next moment is probably one of my most, um, most my favorite moments so far is when I was able to uh, fulfill my long-term dream to create a short film again all on my own. So I studied 3D animation and I know the 3D pipeline. I know how long 3D animation productions take and how much they cost. So when I started working at DreamWorks, I always wanted to create a short film again on my own, but I knew that I can't do it unless I quit my job. And I wasn't ready to do that, right? So I saw friends of mine doing it. I saw the hardships they go through and I'm like, I know. No, I just rather prefer working, working on Madagascar, right? So that's until Quill came along. And I was like, maybe, just maybe this is a tool where I can do it on my own. So for Oculus Connect 4, I committed to create a full-on short film, multi-viewing capability in Facebook Spaces, what you see here. So everybody experiences the narrative from a different point of view. And it's a two and a half minute long experience. You can actually watch it in 10 minutes if you want, but if you would click through, it's around two and a half minutes. And I did this all on my own in three weeks. So that was the moment where I was like, this is gonna change everything. Because if I would have done it with Maya or the pipeline, the regular 3D pipeline, it would have easily taken me more than a year and a half. And that's no exaggeration. I know how long this stuff takes. But I was able to do it that quickly, including storyboarding, idea finding, sound editing, everything, right? So that was for me, I was done and I couldn't believe it. I remember I put the headset down and I, I, I actually said to myself, I did it, I did this in three weeks, right? 
So that was insane. And this is the moment where I actually sent Beyond the Fence out to the public at F8 last year. Two, one. I'm so happy. And then uh, last year, sorry that I'm squatting down. It's like super awkward that uh, <laughs> my, my clicker doesn't work. But basically, uh, last year, um, I had another memorable moment where I created another experience all on my own called Last Oasis for the Oculus Quest. So the idea was to create um, a world-scale experience that you can explore and uh, explore at your own pace to discover a narrative. So I'm going to show you a trailer first for this. Thank you, thank you. And some of you might have seen what I've been up to recently. Um, I've been experimenting with quill paint strokes brought into Maya to render, offline render, in uh, tools like Redshift and Octane. So um, this is basically, this is kind of like a bait for me that I'm using for the industry to catch on, you know, because like for me the goal is to have VR native content created by professionals. Um, but it's really hard to break into the animation industry that's already working, but this is how I do it, right? So basically, I have been experimenting with exporting 3D animations that I created in Quill to render uh, offline in a traditional method and texture them also in Maya and using Redshift or Octane. And if you look at these, these look pretty complex, right? These looks like really complex, like clay, claymation renders or something like that. But for example, this took me like half an hour to animate, right? This entire thing took me two hours to do. So those are all, the city was actually just four hours to get from the beginning, from nothing to the end result, right? It's subtracting the render time, of course. But this is pretty groundbreaking to me because if somebody would tell me, could you do this in Maya? And oh, I guess I could, but it would take me at least like three months, right? So you can do something like this in a matter of hours now. So that's pretty groundbreaking. So those are more my, so far, memorable moments of Quill, and I'm sure there will be much more because this is such a new medium. And it just transformed my life as an artist, and I can't, I can't thank Inigo enough to bring this to the world because it really fundamentally changed the way I look at art forever. So, without further ado, let's do some. I'm going to switch over to the Rift. So I have to duplicate these displays. <laughs> it's cooler with sound. Yeah. 
It's really not that cool. So. <laughs> All right. So you guys see this? Good. I don't want you guys to stare at that. It's not very, very fun. So this is usually how I start the presentation. But you know, if you look at this, this is like a little, look at this, a robot painting the Facebook thumb. But if you go into inside the head, you see, ooh, oh look, there's me. <laughs> look, this is everything I have inside my head. Yeah. And this is Inigo's brain. And these are actual formulas that he used. You know, he said, oh, you know, this is actually the brush tool and stuff. And I'm like, OK, whatever. And Sebastian, another lead engineer, he's a good guy. But then, remember the infinite canvas. Oh, ooh, <gasps> ooh, oh, end of the universe. <laughs> Pretty cool, right? Then I can show you some more stuff, like um, just to show you some variety of styles that you can run. What's that sound? Look at this. And people ask me, how did you do the water surface? I mean, there's no water surface. It's just a reflection. <laughs> but the reflection is also painted. It's pretty cool what can be done. Right? Then another one I like to show is uh, this one. It's like this little boy looking at robots in the mist, right? 30 minutes to create this. And people are like, how did you do this in 30 minutes? And I'm like, by not painting everything you see. <laughs> how did you do the fog? There's no fog. It's just low contrast painting. Oh, the fog doesn't go away. <laughs> How did you do the rain by only painting the rain here? <laughs> so that's pretty cool, right? So this is like how you can trick. <laughs> All right, so I have 32 minutes left. So that's enough to make a short film. So let me start, right? So let me. All right, so. Um, I might move my head a little bit violently, so if you get sick, just close your eyes and listen to my beautiful voice. I don't, actually don't think it's beautiful. My wife tells me I sound like Kermit the Frog. <laughs> I guess I kind of do a little bit. So, <laughs> what I'm doing here is I'm, okay, no, I'm not gonna do this. But um, basically, uh, what I'm doing here is like, I'm just using brush strokes that I created as almost like a stamp to create like a terrain, you know? So I'm just gonna quickly do this. And I was serious about the, um, if you feel nauseous or something, it could be, I'm trying to always focus, I'm training to keep my head still. But for me, it just looks like space. So I'm just gonna do this, you know, and it's fine for me, but I know that you guys are looking at a big screen and then you might go like, you know? And I don't want that to happen. So th this is like maybe a rock face, you know. I like to do like this kind of um, environment demo, which basically showcases a lot of strengths that Quill has. Um, so I don't worry about color at this point yet. So uh, let me just a frame here, um, because I can recolor in Quill. So now I have this terrain. I can actually go to the colorizer tool, and then let me undock this. Uh, so I can choose the colors. So I can actually choose the color and colorize on top, right? So um, because I'm gonna put the lighting from the back, I like backlit stuff, um, this will be mostly in shadow. So I'm gonna pick a sky color for now, something like this. And then um, the sky color will make the shadows a little bit um, purple. So I'm gonna bring in some purples, maybe some blues as well. So this is a good shadow color. Whoa, alarm. Shame on you. <laughs> no, just kidding, I don't mind. So, um, okay, so here, um, this is the rocks, so the rocks will be like kind of blue as well. Uh, let me 
I see. And we're like, so far it's two minutes, right? And I already have like a little bit of a terrain. So uh, you ask me how I can see the time? It's the gap. So if I look up, then I know, you know that I'm looking at you guys. Uh, <laughs> all right, so um, trees, we need some trees. So let me do some trees. Uh, I need some brown. So let me pick some brown here. Let me uh, move this over here. And then I just paint some trees w uh, and change the brush size while I'm drawing. And then what I can do is I can just duplicate this and then duplicate this and create like a really cool looking tree, duplicate this and have like a bunch of different looking trees, right? Maybe we make it smaller. So this was pretty quick, right? So what is it? What was the question? No, shy now? Okay, that's fine. Um, okay, so I, I'm gonna go towards the canopy now. So for the canopy, I do the same thing. I create like a little uh, brush piece and then I just select it and duplicate it and it's like s s faster than the lightning here, right? Boom, 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 boom. It's like, holy cow, oh my God, this is magical. Yeah, it actually feels like magic, so trust me. This is like still so game-changing for me. I can't believe that not more people have taken on this round of like creation in VR because it's so liberating, you know. I I'm come from Photoshop painting and Maya and stuff like that. And when I used VR for the first time, I was like, I don't have the handcuffs anymore, you know. It's like, I can do anything. So um, I'm just doing the lighting here a little bit with color, you know, and we can maybe have some really hot hits here where we simulate like translucency, you know. So if you look from this side, it looks really cool, see? Ooh, ooh. So people ask me, like, how do you light in Quill? Well, you paint the light. You paint it. And what if you don't know how to paint light? Well, then take it into Maya and light it there. Right? So we have like export workflows. You can export FBX, USD, Alembic, and uh, OBJ. So you can use that workflow if you want to uh, keep using it um, down the regular pipeline. So what I just did is I just duplicated uh, the trees um, to do some lighting on the trees. So I duplicated the trees strokes so I can just quickly add lighting. It's a quick and dirty trick that I like to do. So now you have like cool rim lighting. It's nice, right? Ooh, nice. Okay, so now I go back to the rock layer that's here and then I need to add some highlights as well. So let me add some highlights here. The light is coming through. I don't think light makes that sound, but it's okay. But we need some animation now. So for the animation, I'm gonna create a new layer, fill it up with maybe like 15 frames or something, hit play, and I always like to um, quote Bruce Lee's interview, last interview, where he says that you put water into a cup, it becomes the cup. Right? You paint a waterfall, you become the waterfall, watch. Right, isn't it cool now? You can flow like the water, flow, 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 flow. So I'm gonna use a different color so you can see where I'm painting, you know, because it might be hard to see on the screen. But you can see that I'm like now becoming the waterfall. And it feels good. Holy beep. Yeah, exactly, I feel you. So we have this now. Um, now Bruce Lee keeps going. He's saying, now water, can, now water can flow or it can crash. So let it crash, crash, boom, 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 boom. You know? So it's crashing here, crashing here, and crashing here. Another thing I like to do is like, you know, there's always like in production pipelines, if you guys come from like um, film production and stuff, you know that there's always like this art director who thinks it's a good idea to create a rock like this and put it in the water. <laughs> yeah, I, I thought it's a good idea to put a rock right here. I know you're done with effects and stuff, but I don't care, right? <laughs> and then you would be like, oh my God, you know, that bastard. What did you do to me? But in Quill, it's like, oh, that's fun. More, more crashing water. You know, give me like 10 seconds and I'm done, right? So that's pretty cool. So now we need some wind in the trees. So we have the canopy here. Um, 
I'm gonna optimize the canopy a little bit here um, to reduce the vertices, which you can do as well. And then I'm gonna just create maybe 15 frames, 20, uh, 19 frames, fair enough. And then I use the nudge over time. And guess what? I'm gonna become the wind. I created some weather. See, this is pretty cool, right? And now I create a new layer. Maybe like we need 100 frames. Uh, 100 frames is about four seconds. Uh, 94 is enough. I hit play, and now I become the leaf. So this is, by the way, our color picker sound. It's pretty cool. Okay, and then I become the leaf. So this is really cool. So for an animator, this is like an animator stream that you can actually feel the animation. This is something completely new to me. You know, like in keyframe animation, I would only see the animation when I'm done with it, right? Here, you can actually manipulate it while you're animating it. So this is a completely new way of animating. It's kind of more like motion capture, but it's really not because you can, you still have agency on how to put character into the leaves, for example. So for example, this guy is like, woo, woo, woo. I don't care about you guys. I'm gonna fly away. Woo, woo. I'm gonna do my loops here. Woo, woo. Oh, there he is. Woo, 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 woo. <laughs> you know. So this is really, really cool, right? Okay. So now I have the leaves falling. Uh, I need some butterflies. So I like to do butterflies. So for the butterflies, I just use the same layer, and then the butterfly will fly like a butterfly. So guess what? I'm gonna become the butterfly, right? So let me get into the feel of a butterfly. I'm a butterfly, I'm a butterfly. Done. So it looks like a butterfly. Cool, huh? All right, so now we need some grass. So let me paint some grass uh, blowing in the wind. So I'm gonna paint some grass here and something like this. Uh, and then I'm gonna colorize it. So we have like a nice little gradient here going on. This looks pretty. Uh, and this, those strokes are always live, so I can just always adjust them as I need to. And then I'm just gonna put a patch of grass here. So what I'm doing is, while I'm duplicating is I'm rotating it so it, it looks random, right? This is just to show you how uh, quickly you can do like a patch of grass like this, you know, right? And now all you need to do is like duplicate the frames a few times and hit play and nudge and become the wind again. So, ooh, ooh, so we have now grass that's blowing in the wind, right? And it really matters that you become the wind because if you do like, oh, the wind moves like this, you know, it will move like this as well, you know? <laughs> so you don't want that. So be gentle. This is just a light breeze, so become the breeze. Okay, this is cool. Now, this was actually just 10 minutes. Can you imagine? This is pretty crazy, right? So um, let me save this at this point. Um, let me call it AWE. Woo! Okay, and we need some character animation. So for that, I'd like to pick one of you guys. Um, let's see. You, what, what's your name again? Michael. Michael, okay, Michael. You're going down. <laughs> All right, so. Um, all right, so I'm gonna paint Michael now. Uh, he's gonna dance with some rabbits maybe, you know. Uh, okay, let's, let me see what, yeah. Is it blue jeans or black jeans? Dark, dark blue, right? Okay, dark blue. Fair enough, dark blue jeans. So I'm gonna, you're gonna look really rough because I have a time constraint, so, you know, forgive me if it's not photo real you. But let me check your shoes. Black shoes, all right. So, black shoes, duplicate, and you have like some stripes on your shirt. So, it's a little bit too purple, doesn't matter. So I'm just gonna do it like really quick. It only sells the idea that it's you, Michael. So, okay. 
that's good enough um, for Michael. Uh, this is his arms. Arms. Okay, we need a face. We need a face. Uh, skin and shadow, probably something like this. And then I give you like some, some smiley eyes, yay. And you have a beard, oh, you have a goatee or something, right? So you have like this kind of a, is it a chin strap? <laughs> no. No. Uh, okay, there's nothing there. Okay, let me remove this. <laughs> <laughs> it's more like this, so um, maybe some gradient here. I'm gonna give you some ears. And um, let me put some ears here. And ears, and then the ears need to have some subsurface scattering. Yeah, I know a little bit of plating terms, you know. So this is like scattering. Ooh, look at that. Um, all right, so you, now you need um, the nose. Um, I'm gonna put some color on it. So there's a wireframe mode where you can actually see the um, uh, topology, which helps a little bit if you uh, don't have much lighting in there yet, but um, so. Like this, nice eyebrows, and the hair is awesome. It's like, <laughs> you know, I'm not gonna paint the whole hair like this. This is just the beginning, right? So I'm just gonna add some highlights in there. You know, I'm now a barber. So here, highlights. Oops, no, that was straight hair. You have more curly hair, yeah, something like this. And then I'm just gonna select this and duplicate it, right? <laughs> oh, perfect. Uh, it's actually starting to look like you. I like this. Okay, so okay, so we have a nice grin on your mouth. So let's put a nice grin. Yay. And you know, like one thing you learn in VR, you know, like like the first thing people do is like um, they, they draw a face like this, you know, and then oh this is magical, but it's flat. So what I learned over time is like, you know, you learn how to use the space, right? So to you, this will look like um, 2D still, right? But I'm actually painting in space, right? So you, if you look at my hand movement, it's actually moving in space. And if you look, it's like totally 3D, right? So this is like a new skill set that I acquired, you know, like drawing circles in space and stuff like that, you know? Look at you, this is cool. Okay, put the head right here. What kind of music do you like to listen to? Rock? Uh, <laughs> what is it? Side trend. Okay, that's like kind of hardcore stuff. <laughs> okay, it sounds hardcore, but I guess <laughs> no. trends. Uh, I don't know. Okay, yeah, I mean, it has a good beat to it, right? <laughs> so, okay, I'm gonna let you dance later. So, okay, you need a neck. I can't just forget the neck here, so I'm gonna put your neck on here. Um, do I have everything? You have like a necklace. What does it say? Like, like, oh, it's like, a, it, what is it? Is it like a, huh? It's a hook. We have to be accurate here, so he has a hook. Something like this? All right. Yeah, so let me put this around your neck and let me close this off here. <laughs> okay, so um, you're standing right here. Let me put you right there. This is good. We have, oh, we have 15 minutes left. I think I can do another person here. Who wants to go? I need a female. Okay, you, you're in the front here. Okay, and what's your name? Paige. Yeah. Paige. Paige? Paige. Okay, Paige. Okay, you're going down. <laughs> okay, so. Um, I think 15 minutes, okay, that's the crazy thing about VR is like you can actually kind of estimate how long things take. So I think 15 minutes is just enough for me to animate um, Michael and Paige here. So Paige has like shorts with like those nice socks, good, and um, white shoes, oh, it's like kind of black and let me get this right here, something like this. Yeah. Yeah, that's good enough, right? Yeah, okay, so, um, yeah, all right, all right, thanks for the critique. All right, so you have like a hoodie or something? Is it a hoodie? It's a, a sweatshirt. A sweatshirt, okay, a sweatshirt, fair enough. 
AR flower. Okay, I'm gonna have to make sure that that's respected in there. So okay, let me put the oops the arm here. Uh, yeah, it's gonna be really rough because I'm running out of time. But um, AR flower, it's something something here, right? Uh, yeah, it's <laughs> like a flower. Okay. Like this, done, boop, okay. <laughs> All right, um, okay, now I need uh, to work on your face, so I'm gonna do something. You have an awesome haircut, so I'm gonna do this like this, boop, and then like this, and then I'm gonna try something here, so I'm gonna put the gimbal here and then rotate it around. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Uh, okay, oh yeah, it's actually pretty easy. Just keep hitting redo of the last action and then it works. So, okay, so this is page, yay! You know, and I'm gonna also give you some cheek. Let me get um, a good color here. Um, okay, 13 minutes, good. I have to get to animation soon. Um, and lipstick, yay! Middle nose. No, you're, you're smiling, so I don't see the eyes, you know. That's easier. Easier for me. Okay, there's Paige. Uh, you look buff, so let me make you like a little bit. <laughs> okay. Um, sorry about that. So I make the arms a little bit like this. Um, and then I make the whole body a little bit smaller. There they go. And the arms a little bit shorter. Okay. So you guys having a dance off, like one one on one, right? So, yeah. so here you go. And then we have this guy, Michael, on the other side. Whoa, what's up? Yeah. <laughs> all right, so, all right. So uh, now we have Paige and, um, and uh, Michael here. So I'm gonna maybe animate Michael's hair first. So I'm gonna, let me try if this works. So six frames is okay, so. There's a wind, right? So Michael's hair is like, whoa, whoa. Maybe his arms too. Whoa. whoa, so he's in wind right now, and look, he's feeling it. He's like, come on, come on, girl. <laughs> and then there's Paige. Uh, I'm gonna do like a six frame cycle or something. And her hair is going like, uh, let me select the hair first so I can just see. I'm selecting over time, six frames. Now I have only the selected strokes. I'm like, whoa, whoa. <laughs> right. So now we have Paige, and she's not looking at you. So she, she should be looking at you. So let me grab all the frames, and then, eh. uh, come on. All right. And I'm also gonna um, move the arms a little bit, so uh, I already put animation on it, so I have to make sure I have um, all frames, so all six frames, so I'm gonna pose her. I should have done that in advance, but uh, it's okay, it works. So she's like having the greatest time of her life. Yay, okay, so this is good. And, and we do the same, or something similar, to Michael. Michael will be like, yeah. whoops. Let me hit play and select the entire arm. And we have 10 minutes. Okay, we're good. We're in shape. So, good shape. Okay, so it's, you're doing like a weird trans dance. So, yeah. Whoa. <laughs> okay. So, um, okay, what I'm going to do now is um, let me do one thing here. I'm going to simplify it a little bit. You don't need too much of this. And then um, create maybe, OK, how many seconds do I need? One, two, OK, maybe 60 frames. So I create a new layer with 60 frames. So it's a multiple of 60, uh, of six. So that way I can now duplicate this. I basically merge it with the six frame underneath, and the cycle becomes 60 frames, which is really cool. So um, that way you can create something like this. So now both Paige and Michael, they're like basically looping for 60 frames. You can see it here. What this allows me to do is now I can animate them 
with the grab tool. So the grab tool is really cool because this is like an inside influence area that I can adjust with the alt trigger on the left hand. And then I can say like, okay, be 100% on page's face, but then have a fall off outside of it, right? And then I can, yay, yay, yay. There she is dancing, whoa. Okay, there's, the loop wasn't perfect, so let me try if I can get the loop perfect. So, whoa, whoa, whoa. Maybe this worked. Yeah, it's good enough. Okay, and then we have Michael. Where's Michael? Okay, that's, that's Michael. Okay, so I'm like, tra trans. How do you dance to that? Yeah, okay. Isn't that cool? Yeah. All right. So I still, I still, I can't believe I still have some time left, right? So I'm gonna save this now, and I'm gonna give you some companions. So I'm gonna give you some rabbits to dance with, right? So I'm, let me just um, create like a little rabbit here. You know, I'm just gonna use this, uh, move this gimbal, duplicate this um, alongside, and oops, okay, hold on. Failure, I'm doing it again, like this. Select the stroke and then rotate it and then just keep redoing until it comes around. So that way you can create like really cool shapes. And the reason why I do this is now I can do like really cool gradients. So when I basically want to light the rabbit from the top, I can actually colorize it and then it becomes like really smooth, see? And maybe there's some bounce light from the, from the ground, from the soil, so I can do the bounce light here. And I'm gonna um, paint the eyes. So this is the eye, this is one eye, this is another eye, and then I need a nose. Oh, look at this little guy. Okay, and then we, we need the ear. So I'm gonna paint the ear, the ear. Oops, and the ear needs to be closed on the other side. So we have this. Uh, let me bring this line out like this. Okay, perfect. Okay, so I have seven minutes. Okay, that's enough. That's enough to make this guy bounce and having the time of his life. So. No, I still have more time, dude. <laughs> Don't fool me. You can't fool me. All right, so um, there's one more thing that I want to show is like if you go to the transform tool, you can hit this thing called animate duplicate transform selection. What this does is that every duplicate, it creates a new frame. So I can do like jump, 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 jump. Slow down, slow down, slow down, slow down, slow down, slow down. Slow down, slow down, come back, come back, come back, accelerate, 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 <laughs> and hit play. <laughs> right. And then cool. So now I have the bouncing rabbit, but then there's people that say, like, oh, girl, but you forgot to do squash and stretch. And I'm like, okay, let me do this. Let me do some squash and stretch here, right? <laughs> okay, next frame, right? Next frame, next frame. So here he is like, next frame. Next frame. You know, it, it has been a while since I did like sound effects while drawing. That was the last time I think it was like when I was like a, a, a kid. But VR really brings back the kid in you. It's like unbelievable. It's so much fun. So ah, ah. Okay. And now if I hit play, it's like much more dynamic. Look at that. Boing, 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 boing. Boing, boing, right? Now, now you you have the bunny, right? So you have the rabbit here, but now you can also say like, okay, I want more. I want more on Michael's side. Okay, let's put more, <laughs> more, right? So um, now I can actually stop the animation and show the onion skinning, show all, right? And then I go to auto select, oops, auto select layer, and then I can basically see. I think there's some extra strokes that I forgot. I can just put them where I want them to be. And then Paige is like, what up, bro? I have the biggest rabbit here. You can't beat me. So this rabbit will move like most likely much slower. This little guy in front of, maybe in front of Michael, is like super enthusiastic, moves at 60 frames per second or something. And then this guy is a little bit faster as well. Um, this guy a little bit faster. This guy is maybe the slowest. 24 is good. And let's accelerate this guy as well. 
And maybe this guy is also like super fast. No way. Right? See that? So with three minutes left, I say, this is Quill, guys. <laughs> so this really changed the way I create. And you can see, like, you actually witnessed it right now live. I was interacting with people. I couldn't make you guys up, right? So this is how powerful creation in VR is. Just imagine I spend a week in it. I can actually do a short film on my own, right? So this is so empowering and probably like one of the most exciting things that happened in my entire life, apart from my marriage, right? But um, seriously, like this is why I believe in it so much. Um, VR creation is gonna last forever. This is gonna change the game in the entertainment industry. So thanks for coming.